Hi, fellow crafters. The double point fun fold technique was all the rage last year, but I only learned how to make it this week. There are just so many fun ideas to learn, aren't there? I was really surprised at how easy this technique was, so why not give it a try too? I'm going to be featuring my Peaceful Cabin bundle, my Layering Circles dies, and the absolutely gorgeous Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. Be sure to watch all the way through my video for my bonus tips and design ideas, and for a second card idea using the same technique. Hey everyone, I'm Terry from NutsAboutStamping.com. I love sharing techniques and project ideas for rubber stamping, paper crafting, and scrapbooking with you each week. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you'll be the first to be notified when my next video goes live. Now, let's have some fun folding, shall we? I love the tranquility of the Peaceful Cabin stamp set. You can create a wintry scene and add the serene greetings to reflect the beauty of the season. This is a special stamp set. It is a distinctive stamp set, which means that it has a special texture that gives added depth and dimension in a single step. And these stamps create a photorealistic image. One of the matching dies in the pack is really cool, and I'm gonna show you how to use it to create fun embellishments. Now, the Peaceful Cabin Bundle is part of a larger product suite, and you can find this suite on page 37 of the July to December mini catalog. The suite includes the Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. So let's have a look at that because I'm going to be using one of the designs in this pack for today's fun fold technique. So look at this paper. It's got a beautiful shine on it. It's 12 by 12. One side has that beautiful shine. The other side is more of a matte um, look in the designs. I think it's just Fabulous. So I'm going to be using some of this paper on today's project. I'm going to use the cabin image from the Peaceful Cabin stamp set and I'm going to stamp it down onto a piece of basic white cardstock using my basic gray ink. So I'm going to ink this up and stamp it down. I'm going to stamp it in the center and it's going to just run over the edge a little bit, but that's fine because we're going to die cut it out. There we go. See the, the realistic, the photorealistic? I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's really beautiful. There is a matching die that goes with this um, that it actually die cuts out some bits and pieces around the cabin. I'm not going to use that die today because I want to take one of my layering circles dies and I want to die cut out the cabin in a circle shape. So I'm going to bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine and I'm going to lay my die around the image making sure that I have the whole cabin in focus there and then I'm going to take a scrap piece of basic gray and I'm going to take the scallop die from the same pack of dies to use as a layer underneath the cabin. And then I'm just going to run it through my stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now I'm not done with my stamp and cut and emboss machine because there's one more thing I want to do, but I didn't want to crowd up my platform. So this is going to adhere onto the basic gray scallop just to create a nice decorative detail around the cabin and make it stand out a little bit more from my project. Now in the same pack of dies, the cabin dies, there is this snowflake die. And I really didn't know what I was supposed to use it for, so I was playing around with it today and it does something pretty cool. So I'm going to bring back in my stamp and cut and emboss machine and just recenter this. 
and I'm going to die cut this out and I will show you what it does. Two different things actually. So you can use the die to die cut snowflakes out of a piece of cardstock, but you can also use the little snowflakes, I think you can see them on the video, as embellishments. And that's what I'm going to do. So this die has two purposes, which I think is really super cool. So I'll set this aside and let's get going on learning this fun fold. To create the double points for my fun fold technique, I'm going to use the same pattern, but cut two pieces of the Peaceful Place Designer Series paper. Like I said, I'm using the same pattern, but it might be interesting to see how this technique would look with two contrasting patterns. So I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm going to use the scoring blade, not the cutting blade. So I'm gonna move the cutting blade out of, what, out of my sight and out of my way. And I'm going to line up my designer series paper on the three inch width, and I'm going to line it up to the one inch. Here's the one inch line. And I'm going to score each piece at one inch. So there's one piece. And there's my score at one inch. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing along the three inch side, line it up at the one inch and score the second piece the same. And that's all I need my paper trimmer for, is for the scoring tool. So now what I want to do is I want to fold in. So here is my score line and I'm going to use it as a guide. I'm going to fold in one side to the score line, and then I'm going to fold in the other side to the score line. Now, I have a tip for you. You really want this to be as accurate as possible. For those of you that have ever done origami, in your youth or as an adult, you'll understand the importance of making sure that your creases and your lining up is perfectly done. So I'm just going to adjust this one a little bit. And you'll see why in a minute. So this is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to crease it down. I'm going to do the same with the second one. I'm going to fold this in and then score it. And then I'm going to fold this one in and score it as well. Now I've done, I've made a couple of these um, technique cards and I'll show you what they look like at the end. And it seems that one always folds in beautifully and the other one is a little bit uneven. But you do want to have it as perfect as you can get it. And you'll see why, I'll show you why in, in a few minutes. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to ensure that these two flaps lay down flat. So I'm going to bring in my stamp and seal and I'm just going to add a tinch of stamp and seal to make sure that these two flaps will lay down flat and it'll take away some of the bulk from my card. Oh, might be out of adhesive. Oh no, there we go. Okay and then the same with this one. Open up the flap add a little bit of adhesive, and then do the same with the other side. Again, just to seal it shut. There we go. All right, so we've got these as points that are going to be used on the card. So now I'm going to bring in my card base, which is basic gray and it's just a single layer card base. 
and I'm going to slide that aside for a second. And then I have a layer of basic white that eventually for my card is going to be a layer like so. But what I want to do before I attach the basic white layer is I want to put these points on my card. So I'm going to turn each one of them over and I'm going to use my tear and tape adhesive. And I want these really secure. So my paper snips are out of the way here. I'm going to use two pieces of tear and tape on each of my points. Now the next step is to peel off the cover for each of these strips of adhesive. And now I want to line it up so that this folds over. Now this part has to be carefully done. So you want to line up the sides and then you, whoops, I slipped a little bit. And then you want to fold the points like so. So I've adhered the back. I've adhered this designer series paper to the back of my basic white layer, okay, like so. And then I'm going to do the same for the second point that's created out of the designer series paper. So I want to make sure that I have this exactly the way that I need it. You want it to be, you want to have your basic white layer as close to the crease that has been created on your designer series paper point. I hope that makes sense. Let me just go back over. So on the back side of this, I had the two strips of tear and tape. You wanna adhere, adhere it down, but you want this point to be able to be opened and closed on this card layer. Now remember I spoke to you before about making sure that your designer series paper comes as close as possible to each other. That is because these points are going to be opened and closed when your friends or family get this card in the mail. So they'll be opening it up. So you want this as clean and neat looking as is possible. Easy to say, with a bit of practice, it is actually very easy to do. Now what I want to do is I want to take this layer and I want to next adhere it to my basic gray card base. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use my stamp and seal. I'm going to add stamp and seal to this and then attach it to the card base. There we go. I have my basic white layer adhered to the basic gray layer with my points pointing towards each other. Now, let's complete the card by adding the cabin and a couple of fun embellishments using those snowflakes that I showed you how to die cut. So when I was completing this and adhering it to the basic gray layer, I thought the cabin looked a little plain. So in the stamp set, there's this tiny fox. And I think what I'm gonna do, just to add some visual interest, is I'm going to ink up the fox and I am just going to stamp him down as if he's walking by the front whoops, of the cabin. There we go. Now I'm going to turn this layer over and I'm going to add some stamp and seal and adhere it to the scallop layer like so. Now what I want to do is I want to attach this to the front of my card, but I only want to attach it at the top so that I can open it up or the person who gets this card can open it up and see what I'm going to create for the inside in a couple of seconds. So what I want to do is I want to add some tear and tape to the top of the point, keeping in mind that it needs to be just a little bit of tear and tape because my cabin is only going to connect 
towards the point part of the designer series paper layer. So I have just a couple of pieces of tear and tape. I'll peel off the covers and then I'm going to hold this, the points down and I am going to add my cabin just to the top flap like so, so that it can open up and see a message inside. So let's add a message inside, shall we? So in the stamp set, there is this phrase that says, may you enjoy the peace of this beautiful season. So I'm going to keep my card monochromatic. I'm going to use basic gray and I'm going to just open up my flaps and add my phrase on the inside, which is kept hidden by the circle and the cabin layer. So when they open it up, they'll see the phrase inside and it does give me some room to, to write at the top and the bottom of the phrase and still keep that part hidden as well. So it'll be a nice surprise when my family member opens up the card. Now, remember those lovely little embellishments that were snowflakes? What I'm going to do is take these little embellishments and I'm going to add them to the front and to the inside of my card using my fine tip glue pen. This is a little bit of an intricate process, so I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to the I'm going to stop the camera recording and I'm going to add some fine tip glue pen where I want to drop my stars on. Then I will drop my star on top of the glue and that will hold them fast to the cabin layer. Back in a moment. There we go, I think the glue is dried enough for me to show you what it looks like with those little star or snowflake embellishments that we die cut earlier. And then the other ones I put inside the card. Keep in mind, if you're going to use embellishments inside your card like I did, you wanna make sure that they remain covered up so that they're not sort of sticking out and looking a little bit unsightly. So there is the double point fun fold technique. If you would like to see another fun fold card idea, why not check out this video next? And as promised, I have not one, but two other ideas to share with you. Using a different set of products, I decided to pull out my poinsettia petals stamp set and matching poinsettia dies, and I created this double point fun fold using those products and a corresponding pack of designer series paper. So when you open up this fun fold, I put in a phrase and then I put some of these little red jewels to show off the phrase. Now remember I was telling you to be very careful about creating your triangles. You can see what happens when you don't have your fold come together in the middle. Now it doesn't bother me that much, but if it bothers you, then you'll want to make sure that you make sure that your folds are, they come together perfectly in the middle. So there is that one idea using the poinsettia suite or dies and bundle using the same technique. So for both of these, I used my layering circles and then I thought, well, what if I used a different shape? So I created this second card idea using my stitched rectangle dies instead of circles. And I also went completely rogue and on the inside, I used designer series paper instead of a solid color of cardstock, which meant that there wasn't a lot of room or there wasn't a way where I could write a message. So I did a layer inside as well. So again, I used my poinsettia petal stamp set but instead of using the dies, this time I use the stamped images and then die cut them out. They don't have the texture on the dies like this poinsettia does, but I think the stamped images are pretty as well. I use the Happy Holidays image from the stamp set and then inside 
I added another rectangle with a phrase and that will leave me enough room to write inside the card. So there we go. I have three different ideas using the same double point fun fold technique. Which one is your favorite? Why not leave me a comment in the description box below and let me know which one you like best. If you would like a complete listing of the supplies that I used and the measurements for all of the layers for this particular card idea, head on over to my blog, www.nutsaboutstamping.com. And I have a question for you. Now that the holiday season is around the corner and many of us cannot travel to, to see our friends and family, I'm thinking of creating an online class featuring a variety of gift card ideas. Is that something that you'd be interested in? If you would be, would you please write yes in the comment box under this video and I'll get working on my online class right away. I'm Terry. I am nuts about stamping. I hope you'll try the double point fun fold card technique someday soon. Bye for now.